OpenEye just did something absolutely crazy. They have announced the second iteration of their O1 model, and many people, including me, think this might be AGI. So today, we're not just talking about another incremental update. We're not just talking about a slightly better chatbot. No, folks. Today, we're talking about a potential paradigm shift. OpenEye, they just dropped a bombshell, and it's called O3. Now, before the comment section, like, totally explodes with clickbait, and you don't know what AGI is. Let me just say this. I've been following AI for years, okay? I've seen the hype, the um, disappointments, and, you know, the slow, steady progress. But what OpenEye announced and, like, what the data is showing us is different. This feels different. We're talking about a system that's not just beating benchmarks. It's, like, obliterating them. We're talking about a system that's making some of the, you know, smartest people in the field question their own understanding of intelligence. We're talking about a system that might just be artificial general intelligence. Or... Well, at the very least, the closest thing we've ever seen to it. So, what, uh, what exactly went down at this big, like, AI event? Sam Altman, you know, the CEO of OpenAI, he casually announced that they're skipping an entire model iteration. They're going straight from O1 to O3, but why? Because apparently there's a telecom company called O2, and they didn't want any copyright issues. You know, classic OpenAI, right? Always keeping it interesting. So they're not releasing just one model. They're releasing two. O3, the you know, big, powerful, brainy one, and O3 Mini, a smaller, more efficient version, but still incredibly smart. Think of it like having a supercomputer and a high-end gaming PC, both powerful, but, you know, designed for different needs. Now, the bad news is you and I, we don't get to play with these models yet. OpenEye is, um, they're keeping them under lock and key for safety testing. And honestly, like, given what these models can do, I totally understand why. But while we can't interact with O3 directly, what we do have access to are the benchmarks. And folks, these benchmarks are not just impressive. They're mind-blowing. They're jaw-dropping. They're extremely... Well, you get the idea, right? So let's break it down. First up, let's talk about coding. Because let's face it, code is the language of the future, and O3 is speaking it fluently. The first benchmark we, uh, we need to discuss is SWE Bench. Now, SWE Bench isn't some, like, theoretical academic exercise, you know? It's a collection of real-world software engineering tasks. It's designed to test how well an AI can handle the kind of problems that actual software developers face every day. And how did O3 do? It scored a staggering 71.7%. Let that, you know, sink in for a moment. This AI is solving real-world coding problems with an accuracy that, like, surpasses many human programmers. In fact, it's over 20% better than OpenEye's previous model, O1, which was already, you know, considered the best in the world at coding. But it doesn't stop there. They also tested O3 on a competitive coding benchmark. Programmers from around the world compete to solve complex, you know, algorithmic puzzles. And here, O3 achieved an ELO score that's higher than even the head of research at OpenEye, a guy named Mark, who's a competitive coding legend himself. I mean, come on. Now, for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with ELO, it's a, um, it's a rating system used in games like chess. The higher your ELO, the better you are. And the chess world current world champion, Magnus Carlsen, he's got an ELO rating of around like 2,830. The best chess AI. Their ELOs are over 3,700. What does this mean? It means that in certain, you know, certain domains, AI is already surpassing the best human minds. And O3's ELO in this coding competition, it puts it in the top tier of programmers globally. We are no longer just talking about an AI that can, you know, generate code. We're talking about one that can compete and win against top human talent. Okay, so O3, it can code. Big deal, right? Well, hold on to your hats, because it's also a beating top expert in math and science domain. Let's start with math. On a competition math benchmark, O3 scored an almost, like, unbelievable 96.7%. That's nearly perfect. This isn't just basic arithmetic. We're talking about advanced mathematical concepts. The kind of stuff that would make most of us break out in a cold sweat, you know? And then there's the GPQA Diamond Benchmark, which tests PhD level science questions. These are questions designed to challenge experts in their respective fields. And O3, it scored 87.7%, nearly 10 points higher than O1. To put this in perspective, an expert PhD, they typically score around 70% in their area of expertise. And O3 is outperforming them. This is insane. This has massive implications for scientific research. 
Now we come to the main event, the benchmark that has AI researchers around the world buzzing, the ARC AGI benchmark. This, my friends, is not just another test. This is considered by many to be the holy grail of AI benchmarks. It was created by uh, Francois Cholet, uh, you know, a brilliant AI researcher, and it's been unbeaten for five long years. So what makes ARC AGI so, uh, so special? It's designed to test a very specific kind of intelligence. The ability to learn new concepts and apply them to novel, unseen situations. It's about generalization. About, you know, taking what you've learned and using it in a completely new context. Think of it like this. You learn how to use a hammer to drive a nail. Then, someone gives you a screwdriver and a screw. Can you figure out how to use a screwdriver? Even though you've never seen one before. That's the kind of reasoning that ARC AGI tests. It's easy for humans. Most of us can look at a few examples and figure out the underlying pattern. But for AI, it's been incredibly difficult. Previous models, even the best ones, they've struggled to make any significant progress on ARC AGI. Let's look at a couple of examples to see what we're, you know, what we're dealing with. In one task, you might see a series of grids where a blue square is always placed in the empty corner. The AI needs to figure out that the rule is fill the empty corner with blue and apply it to a new grid. In another task, you might see um, yellow squares with different colored borders. The AI needs to figure out that the rule is like count the colored squares inside the yellow square and create a border of that color with that number of squares. I mean, it seems kind of obvious to us, right? These might seem simple to us, but for an AI that's primarily trained on pattern recognition and statistical correlation, these tasks are incredibly challenging. They require a different kind of thinking, a kind of abstract reasoning that's been elusive for AI. So how did O3 do on this, uh, this seemingly impossible test? On a low compute setting, O3 scored 75.7%. And when they cranked up the computational power, when they let O3 really think, it scored an astonishing 87.5%. Let me repeat that, 87.5%. That's higher than the average human score of 85% on this test. And AI, outsmarting humans, on a test designed to be, like, uniquely human. This is a watershed moment. This is a game changer. This is. Well, it's, it's hard to, like, overstate how significant this is. The creators of the ARC Prize are calling it new territory, and a significant breakthrough in getting AI adapt to novel tasks. Even Francois Cholet who originally predicted that it would take years to crack this benchmark. He's admitting that O3 is forcing him to rethink his assumptions about AI and, you know, its capabilities. Now, big question, the one everyone's asking, is this artificial general intelligence? Is this the moment we've all been waiting for? Well, the answer is, eh, it's complicated. There's actually a million dollar prize for cracking the ARC prize, and it looks like OpenAI might just claim it. But the definition of AGI, it's a, like, a moving target. It's a it's a philosophical debate as much as it is a you know a technological one. Some like Charlotte, they argue that it's not AGI yet. He points out that there are still some relatively easy tasks within ARC AGI that O3 can't solve. He's also working on a new version of the benchmark ARC AGI two, which he believes will be you know even more challenging for O3. Here's my take: O3 is a um. It's a monumental achievement. It's a clear demonstration that AI is not just getting better at memorizing information. It's actually learning to reason, to adapt, and to solve problems in a way that's eerily similar to how humans do it. But whether it's true AGI, according to some strict universally accepted definition, is almost beside the point. What matters is that we're witnessing a fundamental shift in what AI is capable of. And that shift has profound implications for the future. The implications of O3 and its capabilities are like far-reaching. We're talking about potential breakthroughs in scientific research and software development in virtually every field that relies on problem solving and, you know, innovation. Imagine an AI that, that can help us design new drugs, develop new materials, and solve some of the world's most pressing problems like climate change and, you know, poverty. Imagine an AI that can create art, write music, and tell stories in ways we've never imagined. But alongside these exciting possibilities, there are also potential downsides. We need to consider the ethical implications of creating AI that's as smart as, or you know, even smarter than, humans. We need to think about issues like job displacement, algorithmic bias, and the potential for misuse of this powerful technology. And then there's the question of safety. 
How do we ensure that these powerful AI systems are aligned with human values and goals? How do we prevent them from being used for harmful purposes? These are not easy questions to answer, and they're questions that we need to start grappling with now, before it's too late. O3 is a game changer. It's a wake-up call. It's a glimpse into a future where AI is not just a tool, but a partner, a collaborator, and perhaps even a competitor. Whether you're excited, terrified, or, you know, a bit of both, one thing is certain. We're living in extraordinary times, and the development of AI like O3 is only going to accelerate. So, what do you think? Is O3 AGI? Is it, um, is it a stepping stone to something even greater? What are the, uh, the implications, both good and, uh, and bad? Let me know your thoughts in the, uh, the comments below. I want to hear from you. This is conversation we all need to be having. And as always, if you, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your, uh, your friends, and subscribe to the channel for more deep dives into the, um, the fascinating world of artificial intelligence. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.